And we welcome you back to the Big D on the island of Nicolette here in Minneapolis. It's the nightcap of our doubleheader between De La Salle and Minnehaha Academy. I'm Mike Peden still here, and Sam Wenger will get his first crack at broadcasting. We'll see if it's his last. <laughs> Pretty excited, Mike. We have a packed house here at De La Salle. Excited to get going here as the players are walking out onto the court into the huddle. It was a sellout before the girls game, but this was the matchup a lot of people were excited to see. Minnehaha Academy, the two-time defending state champions in Class 2A, and De La Salle reached the semifinals last year, and before that went on an unprecedented run. Six straight state championships in Class 3A, a record. Yeah, De La Salle, they're really a name for basketball here in Minneapolis, Twin Cities area. Minnehaha no different, and we're going to get quite a show for Minnehaha, Jalen Suggs. The offense runs through him for De La Salle. It's going to be their two D1 commits, Tyrell Terry, he's headed to Stanford, and Jamison Battle going to George Washington. Yeah, that's a lot of commitments from young squads already. Here we are with the starting lineups. Standing room only here at the island. Excited to see how Chet has improved from last year. Liked watching some of his game. Well, Chet is quite the shot blocker. As we've seen a couple of times, Minneapolis North and St. Paul Central, you cannot attack the lane lackadaisically. If you're not careful, Chet will reject your shot at seven feet tall. Yeah, he's a big dude. Wouldn't want to go up against him in the paint. De La Salle, get this, 19 and four, but they are undefeated against late conference teams. They played Eaton Prairie, Wyzetta, and Hopkins. Three standouts in Class 4A, and De La Salle beat them all. Yeah, big schools, tough matchups, coming out with the wins consistently. That is pretty intimidating. And Hopkins was the number one team in 4A when oh, those yeah. two met. So with the starters introduced, let's do the same. For the Red Hawks, it's Jalen Suggs, number one. Caden Johnson, number two. Prince Oligbe, number 10. Chet Holmgren, number 34. And Siegel Howard, number 44. De La Salle will start. Tyrell Terry, number 10. Cameron Gibbons, number 15. Number 20, Andrew Irvin. Number 23, Jamison Battle. And number 44, Jalen Travis. Jalen, the younger brother of the Travis clan. You may recall Jonah Travis and Reed Travis. Reed finishing up his college career in Kentucky. Oh, wow, no, it did not make the connection. That's exciting. And Jonah, it is cacophonous here. I wouldn't call it a cacophony. It's just really loud. It's very loud. And here we go for the tip. And they Minnehaha were once tried Metro Rivals. And they're hoping this will be the start of a new rivalry. It's been a long time since these two schools have met, but both have racked up a lot of success. And it's going to be worth it. Chet Holmgren with the mid-range J. Buries the short jumper. Chet has been working on that mid-range J, trying to extend his range. As you see, and you know in the sport of basketball, the stretch four oh so common now. Yeah, that was a real confident shot. Didn't hesitate at all. We've got a foul away from the ball. <laughs> Mini Ha Ha. And Jalen Suggs, Jalen the top recruit in the state, no matter who you talk to. Oh, no doubt, yeah, playing for the Tenth USA nationally. guys, yeah. He is the male equivalent of what Paige Beckers is for Hopkins and the girls junior class. Yeah, top tier. Couldn't take advantage of the mismatch down low. Terry to Travis. Brick. Jalen Suggs came on the scene as an eighth grader. He's got a younger sister who we'll see in the girls' team perhaps next season. Exciting. Looking forward to it. Well, in the Suggs line, so much talent. 
no matter the sport. As he knocks one down. Couple steps behind the three point line there. Listen to that crowd. Oh, missed the open. Three on look. the way. Rattles in and out. listen to De La Salle. You thought it was loud in the girls' game. A leg bay, that's a walk. Nope, travel. Good defense. I don't think I'm going to compete very well against this crowd noise. <laughs> and both of these schools are conditioned to play in front of sellout crowds. De La Salle and their history, Minnehaha, yeah, becoming Minnehaha. the kings of 2A. Yeah, Minnehaha not being too far away. I think there are a few fans for them in the crowd tonight. Well, when this date came to be, I think a lot of alumni, a lot of basketball fans, myself included, put this on the schedule. Chet Ongren, three ball, corner pocket. I wasn't kidding when I told you he was working on his range. Yeah, and he is showing it off early. It's not like the old days where you had Shaq and the Admiral and all they would do was bang down low. Not at all. Now you see more guys like Carl Anthony Towns. Draymond Green even. Loses it and it's going to Minnehaha here. Bad pass. And the Red Hawks with an 8-3 lead. Minnehaha Academy number one in Class 2A. De La Salle number one in Class 3A. De La Salle undefeated this year when Tyrell Terry is in the lineup. He missed a few games, including their loss to North St. Paul. Okay. And they're really looking for Suggs early. Finds a leg bay for three. Got it. Nothing but no. De La Salle out on the break, the pump, and the finish. Cameron nice. Givens. Ooh. Cameron Givens with the layup. And that's something, Minnehaha's got to be careful with this. They actually executed that strategy against Central. When you score, sometimes the other team is already setting up. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna play a fast-paced game, you gotta hustle back on D. Jalen Suggs, the long skip to a leg bay from the left corner. Not, Not that one. time, no. Terry. Oh, a we'll good hesitation. Two. Not a lot of contact, but it was a good hesitation to get to get to the rim. Tyrell Terry, four games with 30 points or more this season, including 38 against Mountain Brook. Yeah, and they're a pretty good squad from Alabama, yeah? So I hear. And 20 points or more in four of the last six games. That's consistency. That's what you need. And consistency he brings. Tyrell, 23 points per game. Jamison Battle, 22.2. And gets the second. Minnehaha, led by Lance Johnson, has been the face of the boys' program for a long time. Won three state titles, two in a row, and they also picked one up back in 2013. That's a scary resume as well. And Travis Bledsoe, a De La Salle graduate, back in 05. Yeah, you gotta be happy with those credentials if you're uh, Suggs. Suggs steps into a three, long. Nope. Cameron Gibbons. It's a three on two. Terry, fast break three is off the mark. Nope. Suggs skies for those rebounds. Three on the way. Donovan Smith unable to convert. Alig Bay stepped on the, the line. The offensive rebound, he stepped on the line. If it was were a college or NBA court, he would have been fine. <laughs> yes, we always want for more space. Unfortunately, we have 10 less feet here from end to end. 
Yeah, it's a cool arena here in De La Salle, but it is cramped. Well, in every high school court is 84 feet. That was where I was going. Yes. At the college and pro level, it's 94. That's why I said if this were college or pro, it would have been all right. Of course. Travis hits There's the elbow J. Eleven to nine, our score. Suggs breaks the double, and, and Donovan Smith drains Smith. the corner three. Terry out to Travis, lunges over a league bay with the hook. Same spot, same result, and Minnehaha is back out on the break. Could not get it to roll in. Jalen, or I should say Lance Johnson, wanted a foul call, pleading his case with the official. Could have been some contact there. On his backside, though. Clear lane to the basket like that. You got to finish. Terry looking to get the step on Holmgren. Couldn't Not take quite. advantage of the switch. And with Holmgren's reach at seven feet tall, You've got to really work to get around him. That's true, but he wanted to beat him to the rim, the big guy. Jalen Suggs can't get around Travis. Look out. Davis in battle. Top I touch. thought he was going to dunk it, and then it looked like at the last minute he tried to draw the foul. He did, but he switched to his inside hand and just laid it up real soft. Good finish. Timeout. Minnehaha Minnie Academy. 14-13 left in the first half in a loud... De La Salle High School here at Nicolette Island, and if this becomes an annual thing, I have to imagine next year if the series goes to Minnehaha, it will be just as packed. Yes, no doubt about that. 11.36. So, have you gotten the butterflies off? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Happy to see a competitive start to this one. Well, and these two are no strangers to it. We mentioned De La Salle, they played Mountain Brook in Alabama, Yankton in South Dakota at the Sanford Pentagon, Finley Prep all at the Corn Palace, and then the Pentagon, so. Now was that a tournament? How did they finish in that? Uh, not a tournament, it's more of an invitational. Oh, okay. They lost to Sun Prairie at the Lacrosse Civic Center in the Midwest Players Classic, but this is a team that gets, much like Minnehaha, gets invited to play against a lot of other national teams, top teams around this. Yeah, country. that's an honor for these top tier schools. And even in-state, as we said, big win over YZ, big win over Hopkins, Minneapolis North, they defeated. Nothing going on here, just passing it back and forth on the wing. No shot clock, so you can be as patient as you like. Yep, find that good look. Cross-court pass. Suggs in the corner. No, but he'll get the foul. And that should give him three free throws. I mean, definitely after the release, but when you're running out of control at a shooter like that, you're going to pay the price. Indeed, he will shoot three. Jalen Suggs. Seven games with 30 points or more. 39 against Hopkins in the first meeting between those two. 31 against Austin. And he's had a couple of key 30-point performances against St. Paul Central and Minneapolis North. Jalen Suggs got Minnehaha out of a late jam against Minneapolis North on Tuesday to get the Red Hawks the win to keep the number one ranking in the class and it will very likely make them the favorite to win the state tournament in class 2A. Oh, well, what I'd like to bet at that one, sounds exciting. Close games seem to follow me wherever I go. Yeah. And gets it to bounce in. We've got our first taunt. <laughs> and Jalen if you recall at that North game, you may have seen the clip where he got teed oh, up after great a dunk. Over. Great Tyrell finish. Terry with a strong take to the rim. 
Wow, that was a beautiful crossover. Had the defender on his heels, and he just went right at the rack. That was beautiful. That is how you attack as a guard. What a play. And Tyrell Terry, as we noted, he can score in big games too. 38 against Mountain Brook. And he's had plenty of leadership over the years. Gabe Kalsher is now with the Gophers. And converts. Sub coming on. And this program was built through Dave Thorson, who came over from the Minnesota coaching staff. Spent 20 years once, I believe, he won seven state championships overall. Picked one up in 06, and then that unbelievable run of six in a row. Chet Holmgren missing the three-pointer. And a lot of graduates have come through. The Travis brothers, Tyrell Terry, Gabe Kalsher. A long tradition here at the island. We're going to have a foul. On the floor, before the shot. 10.25 left in the first half, 17-16. Not a surprising result so far. And no, there is not a seat to be found. No. In fact, the kids uh, behind us are standing up so that they can get a look at the action. It's standing room only. 10-15. In the corner, left. bad pass, going to be a turnover. Fast break for the Red Hawks, perhaps. That's oh, a kick ball, but what a play on the defensive end. He sagged down low as the two guys were coming in the two-on-one. Waited, waited, forced the pass, kicked his leg out. Now look what happens. He's got his defense back to help. That is smart defense. Way to save a bucket. It does prevent the fast break. A side out here for the Red Hawks, but these guys can play. And then Steel. he forces the turnover by fronting Suggs in the post. That is two excellent plays in a row. Craig McDonald got back in time to stop a fast break. De La Salle going to their bench here with Kate Haskins. A reverse. Ooh. Terry can't put it down. Little wild, little wild. When you're a D1 commit, though, you're going to try some crazy things. That's, that's fair. Chet Holmgren, that's an offensive foul. Wow, he had his feet set. As you may know, the restricted zone now in play this year at the high school level. So, Krishan Greer, I believe, got the stop on him. You have to make sure you're set outside the zone. It hasn't come into play a whole lot, but a lot of players, I think, are mindful of that zone. Greer was, and he gets the offensive foul. It's the second on Holmgren. He's going to have to go to the bench, and that could create an opening here for the Islanders because now that seven-foot block machine has to watch. Yeah, that is uh, another big defensive play from De La Salle. Now you got to take advantage. Battle, three ball. No good. Jalen Travis. And They'll one. give him continuation. Well, just as you were saying, big man goes to the bench. What happens? Offensive rebound. And De La Salle takes the lead. To the excitement of the crowd. Both schools said, get here early if you want to see. They weren't kidding. Yeah, they closed the doors before the uh, girls varsity game even started. People like good basketball. That's why we're here. Travis. Oh, a hesitation. Oh, Ooh. wow. Had the space, thought he could finish it, but not quite. Still, an impressive display of acceleration. Yeah, oh yeah. And Jalen Suggs, some have told me he actually benefited. Miniha went through a change. Terry Lockett, you may remember him from last year. He went to a prep school in Ohio. With him gone, they said that's opened the floor for Jalen Suggs to facilitate more. And that includes getting that first step, and he's got a quick one. Yeah. Burned right past the defender there. Converts the first, and we are tied. And he has no lack of confidence. That clip that went viral, he threw down a dunk to close out the win over North, stared down one of his opponents. He got teed up. The fans were getting into him. I thought he was going to get tossed. They kept him in there, but Jalen, he's not afraid to 
Smile for the camera, metaphorically speaking. Bump and finish. Nice move, Givens. Nice move. That puts Givens up to four unofficially. You, me, and a couple thousand of our closest friends here. Oh, no doubt. I mean, we're all excited to be watching this caliber of basketball. Long three, buries it. Nice shot. Donovan Smith, as Dan Patrick would say, nothing but the bottom of the net. Hand in his face, too. That defender wasn't far off. Most three-point shooters, though, that's what their condition. They're oh, yeah. conditioned for that. You got to have the confidence to pull the trigger. Right. They expect someone coming at them. If you leave them open, sometimes they jam up. Yeah. Alegbe got the block, and it will be mini ha ha ball. Was it a block, or did he just lose the ball going at the rim? I don't know, but either way, mini ha ha ball. Yes, with a three point lead. Suggs walking it up. Steps Pulling into up. a three. Brick right off the front iron. Terry. Weaves his way around Suggs, what a beauty. He had a teammate with him, it was still a two on three. Took it himself and finished. Good move. D1 against D1. Oh, he picks his pocket, look up ahead. Look out. Goes it down, oh, what a slam. That's gonna get Minnehaha going. They can throw it down too as we saw in warmups. I don't think they're gonna take that lightly. Loose I ball, everybody dive in, there's a whistle. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the Red Hawks throw one down to get a little payback. Oh yeah, revenge is coming, I'm sure. Cause they, they're not used to getting dumped on like that. Oh no. That was an exciting turnover to fast break though. And that's on 6-3 guard. Yeah. Well he hey, really even Steph off. Curry can throw them down if he wanted to. He's done that a couple of times. A couple of times, yeah. I was watching a highlight reel of his dunks the other day. He's not a bad uh, athlete. He's and he's really also got there. he's also mastered the art of the sky high bounce pass, as yes. we saw in the yes. All Star game. I think I saw Lamelo Ball go off and do that in his uh, Spire game uh, about the day or two right afterward. Oh. Howard won the scrum for the loose ball, and ends up losing it. And the Islanders come up with it, and we have a three on one. Dish and what a leg bay, block. no. A leg bay. That was well Cameron Where Gibbons followed through. I don't know, but Cameron Gibbons stayed with it. Two great plays in one. You had that the Kepi Butumbo like block, and then Gibbons stayed with it, gets the baseline J to ball. But again, this is one team that will not play scare because they've gone up against the same caliber of teams that Minnehaha has. Yeah, but De La Salle stuck with it on the possession. They got the bucket, and that's what counts. Precisely. 26-22. And a reminder, if you want to lend your support to TSB Television Broadcast, you've got Patreon and PayPal. Patreon.com slash TSB Television. If you want to put in a monthly sponsorship, or PayPal.me slash TSB Television if you'd like to make a one-time contribution. Yeah, check it out. Find us on YouTube. Even views do us good. Yes. I'm a partner broadcast. now, so just keep them coming. <laughs> My wallet will thank you. And some of these games, maybe this one particularly, you can watch once or twice. <laughs> maybe three times if you're really into it. Because some of these are highlights. That's not your black Nissan, is it? Nope. None of the crew, it doesn't seem. It's not mine either. 6.36 left, Tyrell Terry up to nine points, Jalen Suggs up to eight. We're getting the show we were expecting. We figured those two would be the playmakers, the ones to watch. And so far, it has been that situation. Suggs with a step, got it. Like we said, that quick first step, so difficult to anticipate. Yeah, Jamison Battle was set up right outside that restricted area looking to draw a charge, but Suggs just went right around him. Suggs is shifty like that. Yeah, he's got agility. De La Salle got the timeout call. Yeah, it's tough to get Travis that. Travis Bledsoe went all the way out to half court. 
No, he didn't get the timeout call. I thought he did. Turned. It's so loud in here. I mean, what are you going to do? And that could be a factor in this game. And remember, these two, there's no state tournament on the line. They won't see each other in the playoffs. This is all about breaking rights. Yeah, this is the game. Oh, Three ball. Another for Donovan Smith. Out of Donovan Smith. His third tray. Contact. We play on. Ooh, Terry. Almost put Howard on the spin cycle, but there's battle. Nice Chet Holmgren tip. back out on the floor for the Red Hawks. They still fought down low, got his left hand up there, put it right back up and in. We'll keep an eye on Holmgren. Suggs, deep three, bullseye. Buries us. Suggs has had that range since eighth grade. Givens unable to score. Suggs, he can knock down deep threes. He's been doing it ever since he put on a varsity uniform. A leg bay. Losing the ball, looking for a foul. Not a good shot out of that possession. Uh, no, but he is a rising star, Mini Ah. He had a solid eighth grade season a year ago, and he's only improved on that this year. Oh, no doubt. He's showing a lot of talent. Confidence is one thing, but uh, I still think, you know, in a tight game like this, work it around, get your open look. Every possession matters. Miniha in the penalty here. Tyrell Terry to the line, one and one. It's going to be a nice thing for the Islanders if you can draw fouls in the backcourt and get to shoot free throws. Makes the first. It's a pet peeve of mine as a basketball fan, fouling in the backcourt, especially when you're in the penalty. Oh, yeah, it's a really frustrating thing to watch happen. Or Unless I like, you're the team shooting free throws. Right. <laughs> or I like another reference I like to make the double whammy. You miss a shot, you cough it up and then you foul 80 feet away. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be doing mistakes like that. Terry knocks down both free throws to tie it up at 30. 5.04 left. We still have another half of this. Yeah, if it's anything like this first half has been, we're in for a treat. I would agree. Now it's not just the student section standing, it is everybody. We got a bit of an issue here. We've got some fan Suggs problems. working one-on-one, -on -one, gets into the paint and draws the foul. It looked like there was an altercation or some sort of skirmish among the spectators. Uh, we hate to see that. I mean, it's competitive and tempers flare, but we're all here to support our young athletes. We want to see everybody come with good sportsmanship. Kate Haskins really thought he got a lot of ball on that one. I thought he did too, but there was some hand. There was some hand. Let's see what Suggs can do at the line. Suggs has been money so far. Yep, another one. Six of six unofficially. Well, I was, I was coaching youth ball. I was always saying to my teams, the three things you do to win a basketball game are the three simplest things. You make your free throws, you make your layups, and you get the rebounds. You're going to put yourself in a good position to succeed. And... And watching Jalen jump up for every defensive rebound, watching him knock him down at the line as there's a three from Jamison Battle. I gotta say, Suggs really impresses me with his game. Jamison Battle up to 10. Don't forget about him. Remember, he's going to George Washington. Ooh, not this time. Donovan Smith has drawn a lot of contact on his three-point shots. Yeah, I think he's waiting for a foul to be called on one of those, and I don't think it'll be long before he gets one. Well, Donovan already has three triples. As Jamison Battle goes up for the strong rebound and again draws another backcourt foul. That's really tough for uh, Minnehaha. Because that means more free throws. Jamison Battle, five games with 30 or more, and that win over YZ, he dropped 40. Oh, that is a number. Especially at the high school level. Wow. And he gets the first one. It's not that uncommon, men or women. Franny Hottinger put up 51 earlier this week for Creighton Durham Hall. And at the start of the year, McKenna Hofschild set the single game record, 63 in a game for the Prior Lake girls. And they still ended up losing to Park Center, 99-95. Good point. I only just say because the high school games don't reach 120s like the NBA guys do. No. Uh, <laughs> If you get to 100, it's a good day. Exactly. 
Well, there's no shot clock and not as much time either. True. We play a slightly shorter game. Oh, he baited him well with that move. Finds McDonald down low. And again, Suggs, we know him as a scorer, but he's also a distributor. Oh, yeah, and I think he was looking at shot first there until he saw his teammate wide open under the basket two feet away. That was some awareness going up with the ball. You don't get to the junior national team without that floor awareness. Very true. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see him wear an NBA uniform in a couple of years. Battle for three. Oh, another one. Oh, and he's excited about it. Jamison Battle taking over. 38-33. 3.27 to go. Suggs drives and will shoot two. Teammates there to pick him up as Jalen walks to the free throw line yet again. De La Salle, that's going to be a problem for the second half to resolve. Got to keep Suggs off the free throw lines. Jalen knocks down the front end. We have some sweat on the floor. Is that the situation? Perspiration, yes. Appears to be. Struggling a little bit here. Just as I was thinking how efficient these two teams have been at the free throw line. Not to say that one miss doesn't take that away. Traveling call on the Islanders. Yeah, he made that pass a little bit too late. Three minutes left in the first half. Now I've seen 34 Chet Holmgren working around the perimeter a whole lot of this game. I'd like to see him find that block. And there he is, right on cue. Offensive board and putback. That's his sweet spot. He's yeah, up he has to seven. for the ball. That was smart. Battle to Amir Whitlock, number 11. And he has just swarmed and draws the foul. That's the third on Jalen Suggs. Jalen doesn't like that call either. He thought he was playing just tough defense. And that means more free throws for the Islanders. And uh, Amir Whitlock has a chance to get on the board here. Whitlock on the season. Just three points per game. Well, that was the ninth foul, so next one, it's uh, the double bonus here. Couldn't convert. Things are getting a little crazy over there. Well, there's your double whammy you were talking about. Amir missed the free throw, got frustrated, wanted to get it back playing defense. Fouls in the backcourt. That's the last game for the Islanders. Howard, foul by Terry. That's just the first on Tyrell, but free throws coming. Siegel Howard, the 5'10 senior, sometimes one of the forgotten members of this team. Doesn't score a lot, but you don't always have to. 
not with a couple of scores on your team like um, like Jalen Suggs and Chet Whitlock, or uh, excuse Holmgren. me, Chet Holmgren. And Brinson Ligbe is scoring 11 a game too. That could be your big three next year for the Red Hawks. Yeah, sometimes it's a point guard's job just to distribute and make sure people are in the right places at the right times. Play good D. Howard missing both free throws. Missed opportunity. Givens knocks down the mid-range J. Catch, turn, and shoot. Very nice. Just like they drew it up. A lot more uh, sharing of the basketball here with Jalen on the bench. A patient offense here from Minnehaha. A leg bait for three. And Siegel Howard with the rebound. Second try, nope. That's off of Howard, and this is a crucial moment here for the Islanders. Minnehaha's top player on the bench right now. Yeah, if you can extend the lead before half, nope, they're not going to let it happen. Suggs comes back in. They're going to take their chance here. So Jalen, got to make sure you play smart. A minute 13 to do that. Well, then, plus the rest of the game. Right, but you don't want a fourth <laughs> foul. You don't want three. You really don't want four. Suggs, beep, beep. Slice into the basket, switching hands, and De La Salle back again. out the other way. Given scoring on the other end, as we noted before, when you score in transition, you got to be mindful that the other team may be in position to do the same. And it's been Cameron Givens on that punch back for De La Salle a couple of the times now. He's really getting out there ahead. Quick, quick guard with a nice touch around the hoop. Looks like they're going to hold for the one shot. There's the five second call. And Suggs waiting until the last possible moment. Jameson, now is the time to get in his face. Force that five second count. Make a move. Don't give him the last shot so easy. Three on the way. No good. And Tyrell Terry strip. 42-38. That wouldn't have counted. What a first half. Yeah, thrilling. Maybe not the greatest shot, maybe not the greatest look to end it from Jalen, but uh, overall, yeah, both teams getting to the free throw line, getting to the rim, very exciting. Well, we have plenty of good moments to salivate in this one, and I can't wait to see what moments we'll have in our second game, or our second half, I our should say, half, of our yes. second game. Uh, high School like Boys game. Basketball 42-38 is our halftime score. Join us for the second half. If you'd like to sponsor a TSP television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSP television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. And as promised, we have Nerje Weems and Mary Claire Francois. Nora ran off. Uh, I guess 25 points is a little too much to handle, isn't it, Mary? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Nerje, a lot of folks have praised your evolution this year. And when Elena Jones went out, you really seemed to have stepped it up in the post. And we saw that in the girls game. How are you so dominant? I know my teammates are behind me. They're cheering me up every time I mess up. My coaches are steady encouraging me, keeping me in the gym, helping me work on the things I need to work on to better my game. And you and Mary ran a press to start the game and you put up 50 and a half. We're not used to seeing this out of De La Salle. I don't know if you planned for that, but what led you to speed things up and how did it become so successful? Uh, well, let's just speed, speed things up was our defense. You know, when we have a full court press and get points up quick, it really changes the whole game. It gets our energy up. It gets everything moving fast. It all starts on defense and feeding into our offense and just keeping that energy up. What does it mean to be part of the official revival of this rivalry? You played Minnehaha a year ago, but it was just a one-off girls game. Now you got to play in front of a full house. You're getting a chance to see some great boys players go at it. How fun is it to revive what was an old conference rivalry? 
I think it definitely changes the energy, considering there's a, like a full house, a lot of people cheering for you. So you know you want to do your best in front of all these people, all these eyes, you know, and be a team. Yeah, and being my last year, I just wanted to go out with a high note um, and just make sure that the youngins are keeping it together. On that note, Mary, what are your plans after you hang up the black and gold jersey? I'm still undecided, but I, I do want to play. You do want to play? Well, I think after this game, you might get a couple of looks. You got the two seed in your section, but your coach has told me every year you maybe get on a rough start, but you always find a way to rally together at the end. What is it about this team where they consistently come together at that point? Um, I think it's the consistent coaching, the consistent picking each other up when we're down, you know, just playing hard throughout the whole game. And everyone knows what's on the line, and we don't want to go home, so we're going to play our hardest. And speaking of, it looks like you're not ready to go home either, but uh, what have you enjoyed the most out of this evening of games? Um, I guess just playing with my teammates and having fun with them and being able to carry the wins. I'd say seeing everyone step up and take part in being, being on this island. Now, you've got a lot of pieces coming back, but Mary, what are you going to miss most about playing uh, prep basketball here? Uh, definitely my teammates and coaches. <laughs> but not Nerze. You can't stand her, right? No, no. <laughs> and Nerze, you're going to be part of a lot of uh, players coming back next year. We saw Savannah White, Maya Williams show some intensity. You know, we've got Nora. The future looks bright at De La Salle, and how do you hope to play a part in that? I know just because it's a younger team, so I hope to carry them through and be able to guide them and help them with the things that they need to work on and be a better captain just to see my team succeed. All right. You want to say hi to anybody? <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Mom and Dad. Sorry, Nora, you couldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, Nora missing out on the TV time. So, when uh, Nora, when you miss out on that offer, remember, you had your chance. No, we hate tease. It was a lot of fun to see you guys. Um, I'm going to try to make some more games next year so you don't uh, wonder where I'm at. Uh, but congrats on the win. Uh, good luck in sections, and go back out there and cheer on the boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thursday Weems and Mary Claire Francois will be back with the second half in a moment. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. Mike Beaton and Sam Wagner back here with high school boys basketball. Second half about to start between Minnehaha Academy and De La Salle. 42-38 is our halftime score. Jalen Suggs unofficially with 17 points to lead the Red Hawks. Jamison Battle leads the Islanders with 15. Second half, I don't know what's going to happen. These two teams, they play oh so close. Anything is a possibility. No doubt, no doubt. But I'm looking here and I see De La Salle's got three guys in double figures. At uh, Tyrell Terry has 11 and Givens with 10, whereas the only one in double figures for many high is Jalen Suggs. I think with a balanced score sheet like that, De La Salle with the lead coming into half, and the hometown home crowd fan on their side, I think De La Salle stands a good chance here. But that could change in a hurry. Very true, Minnehaha. very true. As we noted earlier, a who's who of celebrities here. Royce White. Among former players, Tyrell hey. Terry, so a wish. legend in the making. A lot of former and current coaches. And just some fans of the game who want to check out the action here. Yeah, this is the game to be at. Well, except for Noah Francois, apparently uh, just wanted to go home. <laughs> I wouldn't be leaving the middle of this game. I wouldn't leave either. She's missing out. Yeah, exciting. What and, a block there. And there's nothing on the line here except pride. There's no conference affiliation. They're not in the same section. You, they won't see each other in state. This is all about bragging rights. Oh, great help side defense from the little guy. What a block. Battle for three. Ooh. This place would have erupted had that gone down. Yeah, what a. Suggs, step back off the glass and in. Nice little bank shot there. 
collected yep. himself. Good look. Good look. Looking at this crowd, I'm wondering, why do we even have the bleachers out? Yeah. No one's using them. Oh, Tyrell Terry. One. A take to the rim and a chance at three. Attacking Chet Holmgren down low with no fear. And you know what? More teams ought to do that. North, St. Paul Central, they tried to go at them at their usual pace. Tyrell Terry said, you got to attack. When you have a seven foot post player down low, you got to find a way to make some space. And you said it, don't back down from the big guy. He you may can't. be a big tough defender, but. You can't play scared. Yeah, get him into foul trouble. Send him to the bench, you know. That's the third foul on Holmgren. Yeah, you got their two stars in foul trouble here early right. in the second. Holmgren and Suggs with three. And Bay with just three points. Now, if he can get going for the Red Hawks. Yeah, we might change our tune. Right. Suggs. Ooh. They wanted to travel. And Lake Bay oh. went for the dunk, didn't get it. Stuffed by the rim. Two on one for the Islanders. Here comes Battle and Suggs having to play conservative, but he catches a break there. Well, he did nicely to avoid, uh, avoid the charge, but uh, no finesse on the finish. And that's gonna be a foul on number 13, Julian Wright. And Tyrell Terry defending his teammate on the defensive side there. He thought Jalen Suggs pushed off with his forearm. I didn't see it. Kai Brinson, the interim AD at De La Salle. He's had a busy night trying to keep the crowd uh, back to give them some space. Holmgren puts Second back try. his own miss. Second try. Yeah, you could say that again. It is raucous here. What a block! And a little emotion out of Chet there. Like to see that out of your big guy. Yeah, when they're up big, we see a lot of showtime moves from Minnehaha Academy, and even at the end of that North game, they're not afraid to play to the cameras a little bit. There's the foul. He had two hands on his waist and a third hand on his arm. That whole time, Battle was dribbling the ball. That's Brad on Caden Johnson. It's on Caden Johnson. I got to give props to Kai Brinson for <laughs> managing the mayhem that is this event. Of course, she had some practice with the De La Salle Cretan series last week. How was that one? Pretty wild as well? It's always a packed house because yes. of the rivalry, the history. They're the oldest members of the Archdiocese oh, in wow. Minneapolis and St. Paul. This one, it just goes back to the conference days in the Tri Metro. Terry thought about another long three. There, work the ball around a little bit. And a foul away from the ball. It will go against Siegel Howard. He didn't like that call. Yeah, I don't know, maybe play on there. I think they just got tangled up in the lane. Double foul. Oh, I see. So, offsetting personals. It's a second foul for both Howard and Travis. So play on? <laughs> I don't I know. I guess, well they offset. <laughs> it's rare, but it can happen where both players are called for a foul. Battle, three ball. Off the inbound, not a bad look. Can't Red Hawks pick it up. Ball. They're looking to run. Holmgren with the reverse. Very nice play. Holmgren goes up to 11. And there, there we have our second player for Minnehaha into double figures. Well, it was only a matter of time. Minnehaha's not a one-trick pony. True. If you've been following this team over the last few years, and they played a boatload of high-caliber teams, they beat Austin convincingly, the game where Jalen Suggs became the all-time leading scorer in Minnehaha history. And he still has another year. Yeah, he could destroy that record. Though. Yeah. That's going to be a foul on Howard. That will be his third. And now the Red Hawks are going to have to navigate the foul situation here. Getting into foul trouble early on in the second half here, too. Don't want to have two halves like that. It's going to be tough to win a ball game. Ooh, Terry with a nice cut and a good cross-court bounce pump. Travis with the elbow, Jay. Now that is some great ball movement on that possession. 
You don't see that often. Jalen Suggs, deep three is long. Hi, Karim. wanted the rebound. Right. And Alek Bay lost the handle. Thought he was being hit, but I don't think so. You should, you think the crowd is big, you should see the number of Twitter followers I picked up. Everyone's asking if there's a live stream or a way to watch this game. And a couple of folks have said for the 60,000th time, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's I've safe had. delayed. I've had a few people walk up looking for that live stream. Well, direct people to your YouTube. It's fun to watch it on replay. It's fun to watch it any time. Givens got tripped up. I don't think the official saw it. And there's a shoe on the floor. That's Looks Tyrell like Terry. To Tyrell he Terry. lost his shoe. Aligbe will shoot two. And at least that gives Tyrell a chance to put on his shoe. That was a pretty spin move in the middle of the paint, but it just rolled right off the rim. Now, did you ever lose your shoe as a player? Ah, uh, no, I never lost my shoe, but I sure had a couple teeth knocked out. As a little guy, you go up banging against those guys in the post, elbows will do some nasty things. Wear your mouth guard. Minnehaha struggling at the line. Cade Haskins steps in. There's another taunt from our student section. Are we keeping a tally? There haven't been too many of them. No, there haven't been. It's been a pretty kind crowd for this high intensity game. Lane violation. So a leg will get another chance. He'll be thankful for that. Missing two in a row is tough. Standing room only crowd here at the island in Nicolette. A few of my basketball buddies had said you could have moved this game to a college venue and it still would have sold out. Yeah, I think so. That would have been fun. Not that this isn't, this is a blast. Open look. Three on the way. Nope. That was Cade Haskins. How well trained is Miniha? Snap down that rebound, where's Jalen? Give him the ball. Well, it's not like Jalen is new to this team. No, very true. He's played since eighth grade. But that's just a mark of a team that knows how to get the ball and turn their possession up the court quickly. You snap that rebound, you find your ball handler, you move up the court. Suggs, no good. Oh! Alegbe! Score oh! morning! Minneapolis! What a filthy putback slam with two hands. That awakens the crowd. Tyrell Terry, baseline J off the mark. But a good offensive rebound. One black jersey amongst four white. Holmgren with the swat. Holmgren with another big block. I feel a momentum shift, Mike. Many has had a couple big plays in a row here. It's only a three-point game. Suggs is hacked. He'll shoot two. Tough D, that was a hard foul. Really wrapped him up. The foul will go against Battle. And just like that, the Red Hawks, it will be a side out, not a shooting foul. Jalen Oh, that's wants what a shooting they were conferring foul. about. I thought they were conferring about maybe at a flagrant foul. And now the fans are starting to get into Jalen's head or maybe the other way around. Then again, Jalen does feed off of that as we saw on Tuesday. That's a good quality to have as a player. You don't want to get too caught up in the moment, but... If you can turn that right. energy and make it work for you though, right? that's valuable. Well, you saw you went right to the camera and said, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. that dunk. 
He means business. Oh, good steal, bad pass. Craig McDonald had nowhere to go. Tyrell Terry draws contact. That's oh, a foul, what is that, five? Five, uh-oh. Only one more free foul here before the one and ones happen. I'm looking at this side of the bleachers. Some folks are having to go to the seats using the stairwell to find a spot. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed. Maybe just because it's so packed, you don't see an empty, empty spot for anybody. Gets it down low, patiently waits. It's not often that Holmgren gets scored on after a block. That was a big two-handed block, too. But it didn't phase Jamison Battle one bit. Jalen moves away from the screen, goes reverse, ill-advised. Here we go. Oh. oh. We have a fan next to us calling a travel on that one. I don't know. <laughs> the De La Salle student section wanted a technical. As you know, there is no clear path foul at high school or college. I don't know if that one would have been clear path anyway. They were neck and neck. Right. He was hustling back on D. I'm just explaining that in case True. anyone out there was wondering because you're right. It was a one-on-one, -on -one, but Battle may have had the step, but he'll shoot two. Oh, yeah, that would have been one they take under the hood and review for about five minutes in the NBA. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing we're not live. Yeah. Caden Johnson going in for Holmgren. Craig McDonald picks up his third. You've got a boatload of mini haha -ha players with three fouls now. Well, 10 minutes left. Well, 11.41 left. And battle. Gets the second. Minnehaha calling a timeout, 30-second one. 11-47, seven-point game, 54-47. Boy, looking in that Minnehaha huddle, looking at Chet Holmgren, he looks frustrated. He's probably not used to this. Certainly not used to getting scored on after a block. Yeah, but De La Salle, they have the wherewithal. They have the toughness, the acuity. Other teams might jam up. They get frustrated or flinch. Not De La Salle. No. Yeah, Jamison Battle is having himself a game here. He's Staying at five with, with 30 or more, so he's no stranger to this. Staying with it. Tough opponent. Whether it was the Travis brothers, Gino Crandall who went to North Dakota, Gabe Kalsher, Tyrell Terry, Jamison Battle. Jalen Suggs opts for the lay-in. I thought Boy, it was gonna go got, up. Yeah, that was, oh, and Whoa. he gets the big block against the backboard on the other end. He does go up for the rejection. Three on the way. It's short. Caden Johnson, rebound, battle, Jameson sends it away. With a huge block. Ooh, he had a great cut across that front of the lane. If only there was a better passing lane. Krishan Greer can't knock down the three-pointer. A leg bait for three. Bullseye. Buries it. Two-point game all of a sudden. Yeah, that was a big shot. Tyrell Terry with the answer. Yes. And knocks it down. Again, great ball movement by the Islanders on offense. S swing it, catch it, swing it. Finds the open look in the corner. And a reliable shooter in Terry. Suggs has a lane and makes the most of it. Whoa! Cameron Gibbons had a look and he slipped up. Yeah, I think that was the right call. I'm not disagreeing with the call, but unfortunate miscue there in the part of 
Gibbons, he had it right there. Yeah, yeah, if he only had kept his balance or alternatively slowed the offense down. They've been playing really well in a set offense here. Being a little bit more patient. Couple of passes. Jalen Suggs finds Holmgren with a two and a slam. Nice drive, nice dish, great finish. Oh, one more pass on that offensive possession would have been an easy look. The skip to the corner. Jab step, Terry being patient. Givens back to Terry. Terry up, no good. Oh, after all that patience, looking for a look, they take that jumper at the free throw line, off balance, that's tough, that's tough. Not the, not the shot they wanted. One point game. Suggs, the kick out, Johnson for three. It's there. Oh, rims it in. Caden Johnson gets on the board. And that's the first time Minnie Haha has been up in a, in a significant period of time. Timeout, De La Salle. And listen to the Minnie Haha fans here. Jalen's asking for more. He says, give it to me. Cheer us on. And the fans oblige. Something tells me this will not be a one-off. I have a feeling this will be another rivalry to add to the calendar. Yeah, I think uh, schedule next year's game. And sign us up for it. Yeah, no kidding. Put me on that schedule. If it's half as fun as this one's been. And the student section's coming back with some chance of their own. A lot of energy in this building, love it. Couldn't ask for anything more. Many AHA fans appreciating the resilience, the resurgence of the Red Hawks. As the defense matches up. Bad pass, turnover. Johnson, three ball. Ooh, not this time. Alik Bay with the put back. He was able and to sneak in there because Travis had boxed out Holmgren, but he boxed him out so far out. And now Suggs with the steal. What a finish. finish. After a behind the back dribble. Yeah, on that previous possession, you took the words out of my mouth. It was a great blockout from Travis. And listen to the crowd. Mini Haha is out on the court. A full timeout here. Settle things down. No words necessary, just background noise. No kidding. We'll let the ambience do the talking. <laughs> 8.15. 63-57, this is why this rivalry. Well, it was about five minutes ago, I said, I feel a change of momentum. We've Minnie got ha one. Yeah, many has taken advantage. And they are bringing the noise. Battle, pump fake. 
Greer. Oh, goes to battle. And Bullseye! I think they are being heard, the De La Salle fans are now. That had me fooled. I thought he was going to go to Travis on the fake. Instead, he goes to a battle for three. So did I. He went with the skip pass for the big three ball. That was uh, maybe a minor risk, but with the way battle's been shooting. Sogs at one. What a magnificent recovery. For they do everything extraordinary at Minnehaha. And the kids behind us love that move. Maybe more than Jalen Suggs himself. Jalen Suggs on his way to another 30 point game. He has 28 unofficially. High, low, too high. Risky pass, bad turnover. I mean, this is what you dream of when you go to a high school basketball game. This energy, this crowd, and the competitive nature that this has been back and forth. Each I, team's had some great runs. I went to a full house earlier this month in conference play, Holmgren sent to the floor. Mugged. Terry, and he offensive the foul. The Were set. He was waiting for him. That is an intelligent, aware play from Suggs. Sees the offensive player running just head full of steam, moving too fast. Wait for him and draw the foul. 7 06, Mini Haha with all the momentum on their side. Six point game though, only two possessions, a lot of time on the clock. Exactly. I hope we go back and forth two or three times more. <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't think anyone would mind an overtime, although we've got a <laughs> winter storm system. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I'll drive in the snow home for that. Sounds, Sounds like, like everyone like, else here was yeah, willing to do the same. Yep. We're not that far from the light rail. That's true. Suggs goes to Johnson. Didn't want that three with Jalen Travis out there. Holmgren to Suggs. Finds a leap bang! Oh, a wide open elevation. Leap bang. And the throw down. And another two handed slam. I told you, Minnie Ha wasn't going to like. Seeing Tyrell Terry get that fast break dunk. No. Yeah, they've had revenge and some now. But still a long way to go. We know De La Salle can rally back. And that was a foul on Caden Johnson. Both teams in the penalty, so De La Salle, they've been highly efficient at the line, nine of 10. They have a chance to pick up a little surge here at the charity stripe. Jamison Battle at 21, as well as Tyrell Terry, Battle shooting the one and one. Missed the front end. The miss, but they retain the ball, kind of, sort of, maybe everybody's on the ground. It's like a fumble in the oh. NFL. The I don't know. With the jump ball. I don't know. Well, we've got it. I think Miniha got the timeout call in. That's the conversation. I don't know if he got the timeout according to the refs. No, but the Red Hawks did have the arrow. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know. I might have called the timeout. Well, it, it saves them a timeout, though. It's true, yeah. It's a fortunate situation. You lose possession, which is the trade-off. Right. You lose the arrow, but you save the timeout, yes, yes. which you might need. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. <clears throat> but that was like watching a scrum for a loose ball in football. Yeah. Everyone dives on it. Nobody can get a handle on it. Well, that's the type of aggressive 
every loose ball matters kind of play that these two teams are coming with the attitude of. It's just smart and it's very, uh, it shows a lot of heart. That's what you love to see. Teams the care. Oh, looking for Holmgren on the. Suggs does find him, him, but in traffic. That's knocked out of bounds. Holmgren was open initially. Yeah, he, he had some words for Suggs. Hit me on that roll right away, he said. Suggs, the fadeaway. Toughest shot to make in the sport, but. Good hands, good hands. Red Hawks continuing to hustle on those rebounds. Yeah, I don't know how much I like the fadeaway decision there going against Andrew Irvin. He's got about a head's height over him. Drop step, get yourself to the rim. Suggs at 6'4", Irvin at 5'10". Yeah. It's a big difference. Even a little baby hook. Something. Right, but it's not always about height. If you remember in that run of six straight state titles, it began with a role player, Ross Barker, hitting a buzzer beater in the state championship to knock off Washburn. Very true, and I shouldn't talk smack either. I'm pretty sure Andrew Irvin was the one to block um, Chet Holmgren earlier in the game. Suggs for three. That could have been big for the Red Hawks, and the Islanders finally control possession. Tyrell Terry. Holmgren got the rejection. He went out of bounds, but as we said with Holmgren, you got to make sure he's not in striking range or he'll send it back. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't been keeping too close count, but... That's four or five blocks for him tonight, at least. He's had of more. Really nice ones, yeah. There have been games where he's had more. Now many haha -ha ops to use. One of their timeouts with 4:52 left in this game. Still a lot of time, but the Islanders haven't point, put a point on the board in a couple minutes here. Got to get their scoring streak back. A lot of time, though. And they've got a lot of weapons to do it. When you look at the section standings, these are two teams that shouldn't have any problem getting through. In the QRF, Minnehaha almost twice as many points as St. Croix Prep. And everyone's telling me they'll go on to state. It won't be an issue. And De La Salle, section six, used to be murderer's row. They've mm -hmm. all come back a little bit. They still have a good and, cushion in there. Right. Six now, that play, doesn't though. mean, you know, it's a done deal because especially in boys basketball, there's a lot of upset potential. Very but true. for a game with just pride on the line, they're not playing like it. No, no. And when you add the fact that you've got a combined 23-game win streak for these two teams, De La Salle winning 10 in a row, Minnehaha winning 13. Nobody wants it to yeah. end. No. They want to say, well, and they've got another week of games. So and I think they're they both want the momentum. Yeah, I think they're both recognizing they're facing talented opponents. And you don't ever shy away from that matchup. You want to play your best in that game. Well, as and my buddy Latoya Turk said, this matchup, this is for the fans. Yeah. This it is, really is all about the fans. And some good play, too. Tyrell Terry up. Ooh, a little short. Ooh, that was close. I wasn't sure if they were going to call the foul or traveling. Well, he'll go to the free throw line. Red Ox now with one timeout left. This is a shooting foul, so two free throws. Gets the first. That's what they want, putting points on the board with the clock stopped at this point. And De La Salle doing a better job at the line than Minnehaha. Both of them. Suggs to Johnson. Now to Holmgren.
Minnehaha wants to eat a little bit of clock here. Suggs draws contact. Nothing called. Suggs throws it away. Battle pulled from behind by Johnson. It will be De La Salle ball, though. They got the stop. Yeah, Suggs attacked that double team, and it did not turn out in his favor. Here we are with De La Salle. Brought it back to six, a two-possession game now. And a lot of time to go. No need to panic. How about that move? Everybody Andrew fell Irvin. for that pass pump fake, and he takes a dribble, finds his mid-range jumper, and knocks it down. Just outside the reach of Holmgren. Four-point game now. Offensive they, foul. An offensive foul, yes, he extended that forearm. He doesn't like it at all, but Andrew Irvin, he just got on the board points-wise in that last possession, but he's been playing outstanding defense against Jalen Suggs, a really tough opponent, and he, he got his dessert right there. Fans are clamming for a technical. There was nothing <laughs> of the sort. You know how that goes, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always want something. A little bit extra. Tyrell Terry. Oh, Missed just the runner. Short. The head fake, his eyes were looking in that corner the whole time. Then he threw up the floater, but didn't know where the rim was. And he got the lane open when I think Suggs tried to make that switch. Suggs down low to Holmgren for the reverse. He's got great touch around that rim. Second reverse where he was very confident. Remember, Jalen Suggs, he can drop dimes as well as he can score. Yeah, when you draw that kind of attention, a little bit of intelligence, and you make that nice pass. Smart player, Jalen Suggs. Tyrell Terry squeezes through a league bay. Got it this time. Nice little scoop. Remember, that kid's going to Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> you got to know a thing or two if you're going to Stanford. No doubt. Suggs with the answer. Change in pace, hesitating. That is a tough guy to defend. Terry thought about a three. Irvin. I'm hearing a couple of folks yell, shoot it. And a foul on Holmgren. That is his fourth. Four Double Holmgren. bonus now for the Islanders. And I'll take Tyrell Terry at the free throw line any day of the week. Especially ones that end in Y. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty bad, Mike. <laughs> I'm here all week. So, Suggs and Holmgren now with four. And Terry gets the first. You only wish these two could play each other in state. That would be an epic clash. Yeah. We yeah, have to they, settle for a regular season game. They might fall target center. Jeez. Well, they historically do in 3 and 4A. Tyrell Terry feasting at the line. Down to four. They're chipping away at that lead. 2.36 to go. Well, with about four and a half to go, they were stuck at 60. They hadn't scored in about two and a half minutes. They did what they needed to do. Now you got to keep it going. De La Salle out of fouls to give, we should note. Suggs. Ooh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Tough angle. Suggs now with his eighth 30-point game officially. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, nothing but entertainment here tonight. Two minutes to go. Terry, Ooh, you see how quickly it. Suggs gets out. They are respecting his range. Yeah. They do not want him to get open. He didn't want to take it against uh, Holmgren. Battle. No I think Battle wanted one. I think he was looking for a little too much there. Not that you need a statement win, but how big would this be for the Red Hawks? Yeah. First year of this rivalry renewed. Chet Holmgren had himself a lane. He was wanting the ball underneath. Suggs wants to eat up time. Now he goes. Ill-advised, I'd say. I agree. 
if you wanted to go for the dagger, I mean, Holgram was open. Suggs tried to yeah. play hero there, and sometimes it works. That time it did not. Well, when you put up 30, you're allowed an air ball here and there. Right here may not be the best time. Still gives De La Salle some, some breath in their lungs here with a whole minute to play. Minute 11. Something's going on. I'm not sure what. Moisture. Wait, wet spot, okay. You'd think with all the fans here, there that would be somebody who would volunteer to be uh, the <laughs> towel. Towel crew, yeah. Yes, <laughs> towel crew. Or get that wiper. Yeah, that's really what they got to have on standby. Yeah, by the, by the Hardy School varsity level, I don't know if that's the ref's job anymore. We got managers. We got fans. Somebody step up. Well, we've got plenty of fans. Oh, we've got, yeah, packed house. And nobody's left early. Maybe Except Noah Francois. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are going to have a lot of fun with that. Oh, Holmgren overplaying. Almost gave him a lane. Tyrell Terry missing the three. Rebound won by Aligbe. Here's a chance for the Red Hawks to throw down the dagger. Holmgren to Johnson. Yes. Good ball movement. That could be it. Battle for three. Oh. No good. And it looks like Minnehaha will extend that win streak to 14. And a foul will shoot a couple of free throws here. A one and one. A brilliant way to renew the rivalry for Minnehaha and for De La Salle. Nothing's gonna change. They'll still be the number one team, but they're not afraid to schedule tough. We said Josh Thoreau in our first game had a big hand in reviving this rivalry. And I think we'd like to see it come back for more than one year. Thanks in the first end of the one and one. And that gets Howard on the board. He had not scored until that free throw. But yeah, it puts the game away. In all likelihood. Suggs playing with energy to the very last second. Johnson with another layup. An exclamation point. Three rattles in Thanks for, three in. for Givens, but it's academic. And the Minnehaha fans are on their feet. Here they come. Jalen Suggs takes a bow. And the Red Hawk fans storm the court. Maybe a sarcastic bow. <laughs> With Jalen, you never know. I think there was some pride in that win. They had to battle back. They really finished strong. And it wasn't until the second half of the second half. They had about 10 minutes left, and they were still down. Good they way to finish that game. took over indeed. Yep. As the players line up for hugs and handshakes. 79-71 is your final. Unofficially, Jalen Suggs, 32. Jed Omgren, 15. Tyrell Terry leads the Islanders with 26, but what a game. Thanks for hosting another thriller here out on Nicollet Island, Mike. Been a lot of fun. We'll see if we can get a word with someone from Minnehaha before we wrap things up. But this was fun nonetheless. High school boys basketball. Red Ox knock off the Islanders 79-71. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. And I'm joined by Jalen Suggs. Uh, Jalen, back-to-back 30-point games, eight this season, and you needed every one of them. Tell me about your big performance tonight to get a win over an old conference rival. Uh, man, this was a fun one. Uh, like I said, we've been looking forward to this all year. It's been circled on our schedule. 
Uh, we knew it was going to be a great game with a great environment. And uh, we told ourselves we got to come out, play together, and stay with each other. Oh, that's definitely what we did, man. I, I, yeah, I had a great performance, but it's all props to my teammates. They, they helped me out. Uh, they kept my head up when I went through small slumps. And uh, Chad, Prince, Caden, Siegel, Craig, everybody that I played, um, they all made a tremendous impact. That was truly a team win. Speak of that impact because Prince of Lake Bay, Chad Holmgren, especially a fantastic sophomore season, had a little more trouble tonight, but late in the second half, you guys seem to figure out how to get on enough of a run to close out. Yeah, like I said, we just told ourselves from the beginning of the game, stay together. They're going to go on runs. They're a great team with a great coach. Uh, this is a great program, and it's in their home. So they're going to go on runs. we got to battle through adversity, and that's exactly what we did. Speaking of adversity, you know, at North and here tonight, you know, wherever you go, uh, folks follow, and sometimes they like to get in your head a little bit. How do you feed off that? Because at the North game, you had that dunk that went viral tonight. You don't seem to let the crowd get to you the way others might. Uh, never that. I love it. Uh, I, I love playing against big crowds on big lights and big stages. Um, like I said, it just all adds fuel to my fire. It makes me, uh, it honestly makes me play better. And uh, like I said, great team win. Uh, shout out to everybody who came. Indeed. And what would you make of this sellout crowd? I know you didn't get to play when they were in the conference, but to be part of the revival of this rivalry and to get the win, as you said, a lot of pride on the line, statement win. Uh, what a way to start the new edition of this rivalry. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, like I said, Coach has been around, and he, he wanted this one bad. Like, he's been talking about it all year. Uh, this is definitely one he wanted to get, and I told him, I told him I'm not going to let you down. I'm, I'm going to get you this one. And like I said, I came through. Shout out to the team. And, man, the environment was crazy. Like I said, you couldn't hear, but I loved it. I thought that was the best part of the game. So you would be among the first, I presume, to say, let's bring this back next year? Oh, for sure. For sure. We'll be back. All right. You want to say hi to anybody? Shout out my family, man. Unicorn fan. Thanks, Jalen, for the time, and uh, congrats on the win. We'll see if you can uh, add another state championship down the road. Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Jalen Suggs of the Red Hawks. That wraps up our coverage here from the island in Nicolette. I'm Mike Beaton for Sam Wagner and the rest of our crew. Thanks for watching.